What a beautiful day in God's neighborhood. <laughs> in Acts chapter 10, in verse 36, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Now, you know, we could go on. I could, I could bring the scripture up every week, let me tell you. And, and, and the area of the realization of the anointing which breaks the yoke. And, you know, if we're not backed by the anointing, we're backed by flesh. And that's no good. But the word here, it says that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit with power to do good and to heal all were, who were oppressed by the devil. That word oppressed means taken into captivity. All of those who were taken into captivity. How many of you know, all know oppression can take you into captivity? Go to Romans 8. So if Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, how much more do we? Amen? To go around doing good and heal those who have been oppressed by the devil. In other words, taken in captivity. You know, there are areas, and we're going to get more into this later, but there are areas of our soul that can be taken into captivity. And in, in Romans 8, in verse 1, it says, There's what? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now, walking according to the flesh is according to self. Walking according to the flesh is associated with walking according to self, because self is the offspring of darkness. So everybody got it for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh or self, but according to the spirit. For those living according to the flesh do what? Set their minds on the things of the flesh. So they're setting their minds on the things promoting self. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the Spirit in the area where their heart is then set forth in expanding the kingdom of God. Knowing more of Christ. Becoming more in His likeness, in His image, in His character. In an area where your heart is set because you have a desire to please God in whatever you do. For those who live according to their flesh that their Minds and the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. So the opposite of life and peace is torment, isn't it? Torment. So then those, uh, because the carnal mind is what? Verse 7. Enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In other words, those who are in the flesh associated with self have been taken captive. Self has taken captive. Has everybody got it? Self has now have dominion. So we must walk according to the spirit, not according to the self. Satan uses self. To bring us into captivity by condemning us. Go to Galatians 3. Let 
Galatians 3, verse 1. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth because whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Now, this word bewitched, it, it's a representation of being deceived by witchcraft. And this is associated with Satan's kingdom, principalities that release witchcraft. They mess with the mind. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh or by self? In other words, people start walking in the spirit and then they walk out of the spirit into the arena of self. And this is where the enemy loves to get us. One of the things that the enemy loves to do is when he brings you into self, he brings you into captivity. So what he tries to do is focus your, your eyes on you. It's all about me. What was me? This, that. What about me? And what happens is he brings you into captivity. When you come into captivity, you stop fighting. You stop fighting. And what happens is when you come into captivity, the majority of the time you want to run and not fight. Because if you're not fighting, you're running. Come on, say that with me. If I'm not fighting... I'm running. And the reason why an individual is running is because they've been bewitched and they've been taken into captivity. Again, to be witched is deceived by witchcraft associated with Satan's kingdom because an individual has been brought into captivity. It causes people to stop fighting and start running. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy 1, verse 21. Look, the Lord, your God, has set the land before you. Go up and what? Possess it. As the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not what? Fear or be what? Discouraged. Why? Because if we allow that to happen, it prevents an individual from fighting and causes them to start running. Do not fear or be discouraged. How many of y'all know that fear and discouragement can bring you into captivity? Go to Hebrews 12. See, God has a plan for us, and he's saying that you must fight to go possess it. But so many times people quit and run because they've been taken into captivity, and the area that self is now overpowering. And Satan uses self to overpower. And many times this is associated because of a, well, a spirit called self-condemning spirit. It is a self-condemning spirit. Satan uses that. And one of the reasons why we're speaking on this is because the spirit says this is Satan's tactic right now. He is releasing demonic activity that is associated with a self-condemning spirit. And it's causing individuals to stop fighting. They're getting taken into captivity. Everything is associated with self. What about me? Woe is me. The enemy begins to utilize and try to compare you with other people. When you're the only one you're comparing yourself with is Christ, not other people. Why God, doesn't God do this for me and he does it for others? That is a self-condemning spirit. It's the same spirit that spoke to Eve in the garden. And when that spirit spoke to Eve, he said to Eve, look it, God is holding something back from you. Immediately, she felt self-condemned that God was holding something back from her. So she took of the fruit and ate. And now she became like the serpent. Why? Because self wants to take dominion over you because that's what Satan uses. Self-condemning spirit will stop you from fighting and cause you to run. Hebrews 12. Even right now, there's such an attack or such an impression of a self-condemning spirit. 
trying to bring guilt, shame, trying to bring things of your past, and trying to tell you and bring regret. If you would have done this, it's a self-condemning spirit. And he brings you into captivity. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God, of the throne of God. Verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become what? Weary and discouraged in your souls. Oh, hallelujah. Lest you become weary and discouraged where? In your souls. Why? Because that's what the enemy wants to do. And he does that with a self-condemning spirit you actually begin to condemn yourself psalm 142 it is a fight right now because what's happening is Things right now have to be extremely fought for. Many ministries and many individuals that have had to give up many things to maintain. And the enemy is trying to tell them, it's all your fault. Trying to bring shame, trying to bring guilt and condemnation. It is the self-condemning spirit. We are going through a season where things will be shed because when things become new, like new wine does not come without a new wine skin. Everything is becoming new, but first all things of old are being shed, including ourselves. In Psalm 142, in verse 3, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path and the way in which I should walk. They have secretly set a what? Snare from me. Look on my right hand and see. For there is no one who what? No one who acknowledges me. I'd say he's been put into captivity. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. Oh, woe is me. Self-condemning. <laughs> I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of what? Prison. Where is it in? Captivity. That I may what? Praise your name. The righteous shall surround me. For you shall deal bountifully with me. So this individual was brought into captivity of his soul. By a self-condemning spirit. We must begin to recognize this. And overcome this. So everybody got this? Everybody here has had to fight with this. Everybody. There isn't a soul in the kingdom that's not fighting against this right now. Because the attack is tremendous. It causes the what if syndrome. <laughs> no one cares for my soul. That is the voice of the self-condemning spirit. Romans 14. 
Now, you know, the enemy doesn't like to be exposed. But that's okay. Because <laughs> we're not going to run. We're going to fight. <laughs> Romans 14, 21. It is good neither to what? Eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, or if offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he what? Approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Has everybody got this? We have a tendency to bring a self-condemning because it's promoted by a self-condemning spirit. Now, the Bible says you can eat all things and it's not sin. But, of course, you know you can't live on Twinkies or Baby Ruth bars or whatever or Bear Claws. Can't live on those either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they'll claw you up. Happy is he who doesn't condemn himself. So you have a treat once in a while. Did you ever go have a treat? Next thing you know, you got what you thought was convicted, but it was actually condemned. Because of something you ate. Now, there's a difference between conviction and condemn, condemning. You know, if you're going to eat five Twinkies in a row, uh, I hope you receive the conviction after the second one. <laughs> Hello. Amen. So there are certain things that God is going to convict you because he knows you shouldn't eat it because it's going to bring harm to you. But then there's things when, you know, you can treat yourself. Okay, but we don't treat ourselves with drugs, sex, rock and roll and stuff like that. So you might go have an ice cream and you eat the ice cream and it's like, wow, that was great. Thanks, Lord. And he said, that was for you. And then right afterwards, you sense this condemning spirit come up. You shouldn't have taken that. That was not God. Who told you to eat that? It's like, shut up. You know? So that self-condemning spirit loves to bring us into captivity. Or when you made a choice or a decision. And you had peace about it. Then afterwards, you were condemned. Oh, man. Now, again, there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Because condemnation pushes. The devil pushes you. The Holy Spirit convicts you. He convicts you and backs off. He convicts you and backs off. The devil condemns you. He doesn't let you go, man. He pushes you down. And when you get down low enough, he pulls out a harpoon. Why? Because he's trying to get you to eventually kill yourself. Could you, man, I'm telling you, people have thought of killing themselves because they ate the third Twinkie. That's that self-condemning spirit that blows up things. It makes a little thing so big. <laughs> Not that it can't be sometimes. Psalm 44. We really need to get revelation of this today so that we can press forward and take the land that God has set for us. Taking the land rep is meaningful in the area of his promises. That are set before us. We're to take them. They're there. In Psalm 44. In verse 24. Uh, verse 23. Awake. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Hello. Like God sleeps. Arise. Do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face? And forget our affliction. And our oppression. For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our body clings to the ground. Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake. I would say that this soul has been taken into captivity. 
Psalm 119, verse 24. Oh, verse 25. I'm sorry. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So I shall meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from what? Heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of what? Lying. You think he's being lied to? And grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. Oh, Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. He was crying out because of the heaviness. You know, heaviness is associated with a self-condemning spirit. Psalm 88 and verse 3. For my soul is full of what? Troubles. And my life draws near to the grave. I am counted with those who go down to the pit. I am like a man who has no strength. Adrift among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, and who are cut off from your hand. You have laid on me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the depths. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with all of your waves. You have put away my acquaintances far from me. You have made me an abomination to them. I am shut up and I cannot get out. My eye wastes away because of affliction. In other words, everyone that loved me is gone. My soul is in trouble. I'm in darkness. Man, the only thing that clings to me is death. Do you hear what he's saying? It's associated with self-condemning spirit. Amen? A what? Self-condemning spirit. Whoa. Go to Job 15. It's the employment section of the Bible. Obama might, might not be able to get you a job, but Jesus can. I'm sure you've heard about all the green jobs. You know, one of the things that our administration tried to do is copy Spain because of all of their green. Well, Spain's going bankrupt because of their green. The jobs are, it's false. It's a lie. It was a scam. And it's been a scam. And our professors from Spain who are standing up now and speaking what the real truth is. Now Spain's government is realizing we've been scammed. But our administration still wants to do it. Regardless of what. But I'm telling you there is employment in Christ. <laughs> in Job 15. In verse 1. Uh, let's go to verse 2. Should a wise man answer with empty knowledge and fill himself with east wind? Should he reason with the unprofitable talk or by speeches with which he cannot do no good? Yes, you cast off fear and restrain prayer before God. For your iniquity teaches your mouth. And you choose the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth does what? Condemns you and not I. Yes, your own lips testify against you. How many of y'all know that when you speak self-condemning, it comes on you? 
Your own mouth condemns you with unworthiness, with guilt, with shame, with oppression. Oh, woe is me. <laughs> Go to Psalm 57. Set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue sharp, uh, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and let your glory be above all the earth. In other words, he's, he was surrounded by these individuals that were like lions clawing at him and their tongues were like pierced. But that's the enemy, isn't it? Go to Psalm 18. Uh, let's go to verse 4. The pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of the ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of what? Which is what? Hell. The sorrows of hell surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple. My cry came before him, even to his ears. In other words, the sorrows of death. You know, when an individual is attacked by a self-condemning spirit, one of the things that begins to happen is they become suspicious of things. They are very suspicious. The other thing that grips them, of course, is um, insecurity. Suspicion, insecurity, and fear are the fruits. Say it with me. Suspicion. Insecurity and fear are the fruits of the spirit. It also brings a delusion, doesn't it? It brings a flawed perception because it causes a flawed belief system. It's its purpose. You know, when I was in the world doing drugs and all the other stuff, believe me, I had a self-condemning spirit besides many others. And I walked in fear and paranoia. I was suspicious of everything. I was insecure. Man, I thought everybody was watching me from everywhere, and they probably were. But there was such a suspicious insecurity and fear that gripped me and brought me into captivity. And the more it, it attacked me and it felt like Hell was all around me all the time. So I tried to induce myself with alcohol or drugs. And it just got worse until Christ came to heal me and delivered me. Amen. You know, go to Timothy. Second Timothy chapter one. Did you ever get to a point where it seems like no matter what you do doesn't work? Or you're not doing it right. That self-condemning spirit comes and tells you that. You can't do anything right. And then what happens? Guilt and shame come. Condemnation. Puts us into captivity. And fear comes that where you're afraid now to try something because you might fail. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear but what? Power, love, and sound mind. So when this self-condemning spirit attacks us, what he's trying to do is bring a sound mind to confusion. Has everybody got it? He's trying to bring the power of Christ into self-power. And he tries to breach the love of Christ that God doesn't love you. Nobody loves me. Remember, the purpose of the devil is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants his greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. So what the self-condemning spirit brings suspicions, insecurity, and fear. It promotes a flawed belief system, which brings flawed perceptions, brings a person into captivity. 
and that person has a different vision or a different sight, it's delusional because deception is always promoted. Let's go to 1 Kings 19. Self-condemning spirit. You know, if you really think about it, um, in this is when Cain and Abel, what did the Lord tell Cain? He said, what? Sin is at the door. Sin lies at the door and its desires for you, meaning the presence of evil. That's all Cain had to do was uh, do the right sacrifice. But he refused. And that self-condemning spirit that was bringing condemnation, suspicion, insecurity and fear killed his brother the end result was murder sometimes the end result is suicide in first kings in chapter 19 now i want you to know that elijah just got done killing 400 prophets of baal i mean kick butt on them called fire down from heaven did wonderful, marvelous miracles, and the power of God was behind him. And Ahab, the king, told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, in verse 1, and how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life, as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. When he what? Saw. He, he didn't say when he heard. It said when he saw. Because what he heard, he allowed to become a vision. See, when something becomes a vision to you, it means it can come to pass. So you must do something about it. And when he saw that, he arose and he what? He ran. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the guy just got done calling fire down from heaven and slaying 400 prophets of Baal. He ran for his life and he went to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Man, he ran from his servant. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the broom tree. And he prayed that he might what? Die. What was attacking him? Self-condemning spirit. And said, it is enough now. Lord, take my life. For I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept, finally had to sleep, under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. And Elijah's life turned around then. But understand, even no matter how your relationship with the Lord is, everybody can be susceptible to this. It is a self-condemning spirit. Even Elijah said, Lord, that's enough. Just kill me and take me home. I, I can't take this any longer. See, what he, the self-condemning spirit causes an individual to run and not fight. They become very suspicious. Ooh. You know, <laughs> there's my phones are bugged. <laughs> they're they're getting to the post office and reading my mail. <laughs> they're they're uh <laughs> they're watching me. Oh, nobody loves me. They're all against me. I'm the only one. <laughs> That is a self-condemning spirit that promotes suspicion, insecurity, and fear. And its purpose is to get you out of position, to stop you from fighting, so you run and hope that you get so condemned that you'll kill yourself. But I have good news. Isaiah 54. Man, I got about 20 other scriptures that we're not going to go to. <laughs> I think we got the point. Has everybody got the point? Elbow your neighbor and say, you got the point? <laughs> if you don't got the point, you got it now. Isaiah 54. 
in verse 17. This is what the Lord says. Are you ready? No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, what? You shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So you got to kick butt. The thing is, is you must recognize this, be sensitive to this, and discern. Amen? Go to Psalm 34. In verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all of his bones and none of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. So you got to put your trust in him. You got to act. You got to fight and you must overcome. Isaiah 53. The Bible says, don't eat the bread of sorrow. And if your heart condemns you, overtake it. Isaiah 53. Self-condemning spirit. How many times did you want to say to somebody, man, you know what? what? What's going on with you? And you see that they're very low. Their continence changes. They're joyful an hour before. Then they're miserable an hour after. Then they're joyful again. Then they're miserable. Then they're joy. And they have all these suspicions of things. They assume all of these things. And if they could write them all down, it would definitely be a sci-fi novel. <laughs> Isaiah 53. And verse 1. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has what? Borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. So Jesus bore it all for me and you. There is no excuse that we should allow this self-condemning spirit to take us captivity. He is rampant right now. And he's easily overcome because he is in you is greater than he is in the world. You must make the choice. You must recognize it by who told me that. And is what I'm seeing true? Because if there's a flawed belief system, you will have flawed perception. Did anybody ever tell you about somebody? And it promoted this perception of someone. And when you went and talked to that person, it had nothing to do with it. That's what the enemy does with you. He wants to bring you in captivity under the authority of self. We've been bewitched by witchcraft. Because the witchcraft is associated with the messing of your mind. It's a self-condemning spirit that brings us into captivity. And we have a choice. Recognize it. Destroy it. 
Fight, don't run, and don't give way to unrighteousness. Amen? The choice is yours. So, Lord, we thank you for your word and exposure to self-condemning spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you have shown us the times that we've been bewitched. Let us grab hold of the truth of Christ because your love for us is unconditional. There is no breach of love. There's no such thing of breach of your love towards us. That is a lie from hell. And we do have authority and dominion. And we choose to take it from this day forward. Self-condemning spirits. We take dominion over you right now. And we command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To loose us and to leave each and every one of us today. And go to the pit. For we decree that we have a sound mind, love, and power. That the heart, the mind, and the will, and the desires of Christ, and the love of Christ overflows us. Overflows us. For he has borne our griefs and sorrows. And he's taken all of our guilt and shame. And we are not condemned. We are rescued. We are not condemned. We are sanctified glorified, set apart for the Lord, honored and blessed far above all we could ever ask or think that Christ, the name of Christ, would be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen.